I thought of this about three months ago before I knew Thomas Crapper's birthday was coming. I was flying back, I think, from San Antonio. And, and I went to use the bathroom. You know, I got upgraded because I got a gajillion miles on United. So I'm in first class and life mm-hmm. is pretty good. About halfway through the flight, I'm thinking, ah, oh, maybe I could go. Maybe I don't have to. <laughs> but I'm going to have to probably before we land. So let's just do it now. Mm-hmm. So I, um, I close my computer <laughs> and I walk up the aisle and I walk into the bathroom and I swear it looked like it looked like a crap balloon had exploded. Mm. This was shameful. Mm. What, what, ha- what happened in this bathroom? It was just, it had not been flushed for starters, but everything at a glance had been tattooed and bedazzled with, <laughs> with scat. It was just awful. Like, I mean, there was crap on the mirror. How did this happen? What, what happened? You know, <laughs> there is no explaining that <laughs> it was it was so off putting and the smell was still low and heavy in the air. Like it, it gets on your teeth right away. It's just who would do uh, that? Right? How does it get on your teeth? Why do you bring your teeth into it? I, that's crazy. I talk in pictures, dude. And, you know, wow. it's like it's like the first time I went in the sewer. I, I I remember on dirty jobs just taking a deep breath and feeling like. This isn't just a smell. This is tactile. This is, yeah. you know, it, there was some crime novel. I forget which one, but there was a great line that said uh, the guy was coming out of a crime scene. And it was a very, very bad scene, and people were nauseous from, from the stench. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he said, you know, that's, that's the thing about a real stink. You know, it's a smell, and all smells are particulate. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's <laughs> such a gross thought. Yeah, it's not just some gas, even though we little call it bits a, of poo in your nose, little pieces of poo in your nose and then in your blood and then by extension into your brain. It's horrifying. That's what's so invasive about a fart, you know, mm. from that part of your body into your brain in a twinkling. Anyway, I'm standing appalled in this restroom in first yes. class on this okay. flight. To the point where I was like, obviously, I'm not touching. It's not, none of this is my problem, you know. So I did, because I think I'm still basically a good citizen. I flushed the toilet, right? All right. So hold on, hold on a second. I got, I got to just, just so I'm clear. You open the door. You walk in. There yes. is fecal matter on Everywhere. the mirror mm-hmm. in not the toilet. Lot. Uh, not a lot, but, but, but some speckled. It's it yes. it's bedazzled. I believe bedazzled is the word was you the word I used, <laughs> which is which is a very very good, very fun word to use for for fecal matter on the mirror. But and you stayed in there. You flushed well, the toilet and did other things. Up, I, I didn't set up camp. Look, here's what happens, Chuck, when you fly in first class. Okay, I know you're probably okay. not used to this. No, you not walk at all. in the. I kind. of... You walk in and you got to kind of turn yourself around, you know. Mm. I mean, I'm six feet tall. I weigh 200 pounds. There's not a ton of room. Mm-hmm. So you kind of go in sideways. You mm-hmm. close the door and then you turn sure. around to address the crapper. Right. Oh my God. What would Thomas Crapper think of an airplane restroom? Talk about advancements. I mean, there weren't even planes back then. Now his invention, there it is at 37,000 feet. Miraculous. <laughs> Anyhow, you stand there and it, 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 it takes a second to get yourself oriented. And mm-hmm. during that second, your eyes come to terms with the crime scene before <laughs> with you. With the bespeckling? bespeckling. <laughs> <laughs> and you realize some animal came in here and just did an awful thing. They didn't clean up after themselves. And whatever explosion passed for the bowel movement at hand, that was in the past. But now it was in my present, right? Now three seconds have gone by, maybe five Mm -hmm. Long enough for me to go, I'm not using this facility. I don't want to be in this facility. I need right, Right. But I'm telling you, it it happens quick. But over the course of five seconds in a moment like that, it it Uh drags out in slow motion. So rather than just turn and leaving right away, I paused and I leaned down and I hit the flushing mechanism. Just Mm -hmm. because I didn't, I wasn't going to invest 15 minutes into tidying up the place. You're but just I being a least, good scout. The least I could do is flush the toilet, right? Right, okay. And, but, of course, had I thought about it, that that wouldn't have made yeah. any sense either. What yeah. I should have done is immediately left, told the flight attendant that right. something criminal 
had gone down <laughs> at 37,000 feet. Uh, all right. In the first class. A bowel crime scene. Yes. But I didn't. Instead, I flushed the toilet and it made that flushing sound. <laughs> yeah and, that air you know, yeah. it works it's fine but but it's loud you know mm -hmm. and whatever was in the toilet went away now maybe we're like i said five six possibly seven seconds i wasn't in this thing more than seven seconds no way no how okay okay so but, seven seconds you've walked in you've seen uh, the dazzling seen. you know yeah. you've seen what you've seen you've witnessed tell you pushed the yep. button seven yep. seconds gone by and it's disappeared yep. by the way well, the worst of it, you know, the toilet has flushed, but the seat is still up. It mm -hmm. still looks like some sort of Rorschach test on the back of it. Some kind of <laughs> Dada, some sort of Salvador Dali nightmare. You know, there's toilet paper stuck to the back of the commode, partially used. Okay. Come on. I swear. Mm. I, it, it was awful, Chuck. There's no need to. Trust me. It was awful. And it sounds me, awful. Anyway, I opened the door, and standing there is one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. Of she looks course. like, I don't know if you remember the old Wrigley's Double Your Pleasure, Double Your Fun uh, ads. Ads, yes. Uh -huh. she, she looked like one of the beautiful, identical one of twin the twins. skiers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just fresh-faced and mm. friendly, a mm -hmm. sparkle in her eye, mm. you know, Big toothy grin. I open the door, and two <laughs> things happen. Really, three things happen. The first thing is, I think she recognized me. I think oh. she, or if she didn't recognize me, she knew that she had seen me somewhere before. Right? Gotcha. So you see that look of 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 acknowledgement and awareness right. flash across right. her face, and it's a beautiful face, right? And okay. then she smiles, as if to. <laughs> Say, hey, aren't you that guy? Or <laughs> No idea what she's in store for. Just right. no idea. The second thing that happens is the funk, the indescribable <laughs> stench of that awful bathroom comes wafting by me and hits her right smack in the right, right in the face. So now she's got it on her lips, too, right? Now she's dealing with this thing, right? So that all happens in the same second. So what's right. going through her brain? Hey, I know that guy. Oh, my God, that smells like the end of days. And then, <laughs> then, then the worst thing. She cranes her head slightly to the right just to look beyond me. And uh -huh. she takes in everything I've just described. <laughs> and so that registers. The bedazzlement. Yes. <laughs> and so all I could do is watch the five stages of grief flash across her face. As I stood there, I can't move forward without knocking her down. I don't want to back up because that's just returning to the scene of the crime. So all I could say was, hey, hey, that that wasn't me. That wasn't me. <laughs> that's all I could say. I didn't do that. Now, meanwhile, if you're her, A, now she's figured it out. That's the dirty jobs guy. B, I heard him flush the toilet. I heard it. Because everybody, you, you can hear it when the toilet flushes. So she's putting all this together. She's going, you know what? I think uh -oh. he's a liar. I think it was him. I think the dirty jobs guy went it's the full first of class cabin. <laughs> Not anymore. And I'm, oh, no. And I realize in the space of these same fleeting moments that there's nothing I can do or say <laughs> to redeem myself. Yes. There's absolutely nothing to be done. All I did was, excuse me, I stepped out. She immediately walked walked back to her seat, which, by the way, wasn't in first class, so she kind of had it coming. What? <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing wandering up here? Anyhow, she, she makes a beeline for the back mm -hmm. of the plane. I step out, close the door behind me. Now people, you know, in the bulkhead and in the second row, they, They've all watched this weird little dance, uh -huh. so they're not quite sure what's going on, but now they can smell it, too. Mm. And I have no idea who went in there before me. But to Sedaris's point, as I walked back to seat 5A, I looked everybody in the face as I went, and they were probably <laughs> looking at me as some sort of criminal. Maybe they knew me. Maybe they didn't. But I knew what I was looking for somebody one of those 
persons went in there and um, and did something that I think was borderline illegal. <laughs> I even uh, had to say to the flight attendant on the way out, I don't want to belabor the point, but that yeah, that wasn't me. She's like, yes, sir. Th thank you for flying United. 